Hi, welcome back to Half of Hardy, or welcome to my channel in general if this is the first time you've dropped by. Today um, marks a new video series um, for me on my channel because for the last year I've been recording my weight loss journey um, and now I want to record my pregnancy journey. Um, so I thought rather than sort of mesh those two together too much and talk about them in a single video, um, I would separate them somewhat, although I'm sure both topics are going to come up in my different videos. Um, but I thought I could get a bit more detailed in the pregnancy specific videos um, so that yeah, anybody who's been following my weight loss journey and isn't at all interested in that side of things doesn't have to sit through um, yeah, all of that stuff. Um, if you are new to my channel and haven't watched um, my videos before, warning upfront disclaimer I waffle a lot <laughs> I talk a lot um, but I'm very open and honest and give it to you raw and give it to you straight um, I make these videos partially journaling for me so that I've got a record to look back on but another component and probably the biggest motivator for me is to share my experience with you in case you're going through something I'm going through or you are about to embark on a similar journey and you just want to compare notes. Um, I don't know if this will be helpful for anyone because this is literally the first video in this series. Um, so please feel free to give me feedback, ask questions, give me advice. I'm seriously open both ways. Um, I definitely am not an expert in pregnancies because this is my first and I don't know everything that's about to happen to me um, which is why I just thought it might be interesting um, for people p potentially like me who've had weight loss surgery um, who live in Australia um, who are in their 30s <laughs> um, who are still technically overweight um, I don't know, I, I just thought maybe my journey would be helpful for someone um, to see what I went through. Um, so I'll tell you in this video, I guess, my story and where I am now on my pregnancy journey. Um, and then I plan basically to make weekly videos. Um, knowing me, I have a lot to talk about at first. And I tend to make a couple of videos in the first week to try to get all of the information and everything I want to tell you um, up front and then I kind of get into my habit of my my weekly videos um, I'll get you to meet my husband and my dogs if you really want um, and then um, yeah we'll just go on this journey together I guess oh, it's scary um, so yeah so I mentioned I've had weight loss surgery I actually had a vertical sleeve gastrectomy on the 8th of November 2016 so I am one year and three weeks post surgery now um, I've lost over a hundred kilograms and over 240 pounds so I've gone from like a size 28 30 to a size 12 so really significant weight loss in that time period um, and yeah, one of the reasons I wanted to lose weight was to increase my fertility and have um, increased chances of conceiving. Um, I did, my husband and I did try to get pregnant um, when I was in my late 20s. Um, and I was probably twice the size that I am now and we didn't have any luck then. Um, so I can't say for sure that my size was a problem then, but considering my highest weight was 191.7 kilograms or 422.6 pounds I would say that where I was a year ago was very unlikely that I was gonna um, conceive so joined up for private health insurance um, I got hospital cover um, but I actually paid for my weight loss surgery out of my super um, because I didn't want to wait um, a year to have the surgery then wait another year to lose the weight and then start trying. So um, yeah, I took out private health insurance at the same time as I had the surgery so that I could make the 12 month mark, which is when um, if you've had bariatric surgery, it's recommended that you wait 12 months um, before you conceive. And I believe it's actually 
18 months for bypass and 12 months for sleeve. And the reason it's 18 months for bypass is because you have malabsorption with um, the bypass. So it's not, um, it's just not as easy for your bub and their nutritional needs um, because you're malabsorbing. I don't really know why that's any different at 18 months versus 12 months, but I will proclaim up front, I am absolutely not an expert. But what I am is I am a scientist. I'm qualified. I've been a working scientist. Don't do that anymore. But that does not take the researcher out of the girl. I still love to know as much as I possibly can about things and understand why things are the way they are. And I come up with all sorts of theories and hypotheses and then go research them and see what other people have found. So I do tend to share that kind of information here um, that I find and link to relevant articles and other people's videos and whatnot as I find things that really interest me. So expect that as well. Um, so yeah, so about six months ago was when I went to my GP and basically said, I am ready to start getting mentally and physically prepared to start trying to conceive. Um, everything that I had read basically said, look, the average um, time to conceive is about six months. So I figured, assuming I'm going to be a statistic, then if I start trying six months before I want to conceive, then maybe I'll conceive by the time I want to conceive. Um, and maybe that's a bad decision because I should have waited the full 12 months post sleeve before I even started trying. But I don't care because that's what I did. <laughs> I um, decided to start trying and then I'm actually really glad that I did. But anyway, another story altogether. So I went and saw my GP and their first comment to me was um, around my mental health. So on top of um, have having had weight problems my entire life, when I was in my early 20s, I developed depression, which was eventually diagnosed as bipolar. Um, and so I've been on um, a lot of medication um, for the last 12 years. Um, and some of that medication is not safe for um, pregnancy. So she basically, she being my GP, sorry, my doctor said that I really need to, as a next step, um, go see my psychiatrist and review what medication I'm on. So I set up that appointment, which I'll talk about in a second. But the other thing my GP did do was my uh, prenatal bloods. So just checking out um, blood glucose levels and thyroid. Um, she did sexually transmitted diseases, iron, B12 and stuff. Just a whole bunch of stuff. Bunch of stuff. Um, just to check my, I guess, general health and things like that. Um, so then I went to see my psychiatrist um, who two, I was taking three medications um, and two of the three I just could not be on um, while pregnant um, or breastfeeding. Um, so she wrote me up a plan for weaning myself off those medications um, and we talked about, you know, what, um, what should I do if my symptoms, my symptoms from my bipolar and depression um, get worse so we put in a bit of a, a strategy and a coping plan for what do I do then and it involved things like going and seeing my GP and getting a referral to a psychologist and trying to have some talk therapy um, but we also talked a lot about um, relaxation mindfulness meditation and things like that um, and it was actually just really good timing in general because I was kind of going through a bit of a rough patch anyway at the time so it kind of just reminded me to take good care of myself basically um so so that was that was fine so it probably took me about six weeks yeah, about six weeks to be off the medication long enough that i could then start trying so i think um if memory serves me correctly i believe we first started trying in june late june um because I think, yeah, my, my, the first time I was testing, I'm pretty sure it was in July. So that kind of makes sense from a timeline's perspective being November now. Anyway, so um, 
because of my age, I then turned 36. I was reading a lot about, you know, how much your fertility decreases as like every year you get older. Um, so my husband, Matt, and I decided that it would probably be good to have a bit of a plan of what we were going to do when, depending on how long it took to conceive. So we kind of knew that um, we'd give it a few months um, of just trying naturally and then he'd go and get a semen analysis so we could just make sure his swimmers were doing all the things they were supposed to be doing. And then if we still weren't getting pregnant, well, then we would go um, to the GP and we assumed get a referral to a fertility specialist to maybe do some more investigation on my side of things. Um, so, yeah, so we had a couple of months and, and, then, and we basically just put that plan in place. We had a couple of months where I, obviously I didn't conceive. Um, my husband had um, his uh, semen analysis um, and the results actually came back really, really good. Um, he's 37 um, and he had, um, yeah, really great motility. Um, he had a slightly lower, like, can you believe that only 4% of the sperm are considered normal in terms of they don't have two heads or two tails? Could you imagine? But anyway, um, yeah, only 4% of all the 250 million sperm that come out in one ejaculate, ugh, terminology, Heidi, um, yeah, only 4% are actually viable in that way that they're considered normal. Anyway, um, so he actually had 3% instead of 4%. So, but apparently that's nothing to really worry about. Um, so every year, all his numbers looked really good. So we gave it a couple more months and then um, in October, um, went to my GP and said, it's not that we've been trying for that long. I think at that point it had only been like four months, five months, I can't remember. Um, but I said, you know, just given that I'm 36, I don't want to wait too much longer to do any more investigative testing to see how I am because um, I kind of wanted to know sooner rather than later as to whether I was going to need assisted um, fertility treatments or anything like that so um, we got our referral to a fertility specialist um, up here on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland Australia and we did have to wait um, a couple of weeks before they were available um, so yeah fun fact or not depending um the appointment with the specialist fell like smack bang in the middle of my fertile window um so i was really worried like were, were matt and i supposed to not be having sex during that time because he might want to do an internal exam and then i don't know would that be just like a really gross experience for the fertility guy um so yeah, I, anyway, it was pretty funny. So yeah, up until the appointment with the fertility specialist, we, our approach was basically, I took more notice of what my body was doing. Um, I had an app, um, Ovia Fertility, um, which I found fantastic because you could completely record all of your symptoms, whether it was a physical or mental symptom, um, you could track your periods, um, you could enter results from ovulation prediction um, tests, which are called OPKs. Um, you could, yeah, you could just, you could enter so much stuff and it would spit out all this information back at you. Um, so yeah, I really appreciated that because um, it would yeah predict, you know, when's your fertile window and you could log when you thought you had ovulated and um, so I was doing um, ovulation tests um, and most months I have ovulation pain. So I also even kind of can tell myself when I'm ovulated because it hurts. Um, so I kind of assumed I was ovulating considering I was getting positive um, ovulation tests and I was having ovulation pain. Um, but I just wanted to make sure everything was fine. And then when we went and saw the fertility specialist who was um, an OBGYN, um, 
he was saying, you know, like obviously there's certain tests that he could do there and then, which was like a physical um, and internal examination um, for an, an ultrasound. But that there was another test um, that he would have to send me away for, which was for um, making sure my fallopian tubes weren't blocked. Um, so there's a dye test basically where they put dye um, up inside you and they scan you to see is the dye getting all the way up your fallopian tubes or are they blocked? So I thought that was a really cool test that they could also do. Um, so yeah, it just gave us a whole bunch of options um, on top of some other additional um, blood tests that he could do um, hormone wise and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, it, it kind of made me feel um, a bit more in control. I'm not sure if, if that makes sense, but it made me, because I don't know, I feel like you just completely lose control of, you, you have no control over what's happening. Um, you cannot force that sperm and egg to do their stuff. Um, you just have to hope that of the 250 million sperm of the for that, 3% um, that actually can swim and are normal and viable, um, apparently something like only a hundred of them, only a hundred, even make it to the egg. And then obviously you only need the one to get in there. But a hundred out of 250 million, like the chances, I'm surprised any of us ever got pregnant. I'm surprised any of us are even here. Like it's just, yeah, it, blows my mind anyway so at the fertility um, specialist appointment he did a physical exam um, he basically like pushed on the outside of my tummy was you know feeling for lumps and bumps and stuff um, he felt inside of me um, he examined my cervix and um, I'd already had a pap smear, by the way. I missed that. I had had a pap smear, um, I believe, at my six month. I'm getting ready to have, start trying. So my, my GP reminded me that I was due for my pap smear. So I had a pap smear test as well. And that all came back clear. Um, but yes, and then he also wanted, he, sorry, my fertility specialist, um, also wanted to do an internal ultrasound. Um, so he did that and that was actually pretty cool. Like, um, yeah, sure. The quality of the picture is not great, but it was pretty cool to, you know, see, well, okay, there's my, there's my uterus and yeah, yeah, you can see the, the, the forming of the lining of what's going to be my next period or, or what is going to help, um, support my pregnancy. Um, he, he showed me here, here are your ovaries. Here's your ovary on the left. And he showed me the maturing follicles and they just look like dark shadows on the, on the screen. It was really cool. Um, and then he went over to the right ovary and he goes, Oh, see this dark shadow is a lot bigger than the rest. That's your mature follicle that you've either ovulated or you're about to ovulate. This is, this is the ovum. Um, and so that was like, Holy shit, that is really cool. Um, it kind of just gave me even more confirmation that I was ovulating. Um, still didn't know whether my tubes were clear, but I was just very happy for him to see that and not just a bunch of cysts or nothing, just nothing there. So um, it was a really cool moment. It was really, it actually was really, really cool. Um, anyway, so then at the end of the appointment, he wrote me some, um, test scripts, I can't remember what they're really called now, where they send you off to get more tests. And one of them was the dye test. Um, so his instructions for that one was basically when I next got my period to then call the um, scanning clinic um, and book in for the test. And there was a certain day of the cycle that they wanted to do that on. I believe it was day 12, but I could be completely wrong. Um, and then um, some blood test, which was more, again, prenatal, um, screening. So there was some chromosome tests he was going to do, um, and things like that. Anyway, um, he basically said, you know, but if you, if you fall pregnant, um, obviously you don't need the dye test. So we all kind of had a bit of a joke about the fact that, you know, wouldn't it be funny if I went and saw the fertility specialist 
right in the middle of my fertile window and still managed to fall pregnant um, that cycle that it would be it would just be kind of funny that I then didn't need to have those particular prenatal um, investigative tests it would have been funny anyway so um, I continued with my ovulation um, prediction tests but unfortunately I ran out of the brand that I'm used to and I just had to use this other brand and it was giving me really strange results compared to what I was used to seeing and then I tried to supplement that with a digital ovulation test but then that was confusing because the ovulation test was telling me that I was getting um, that my luteinizing hormone which is what your body produces to release the ovum um, it was telling me that like I'd already seen it, the ovulation test get darker to the point where it looked like yep that was my surge um, and then saw that line getting lighter yet my digital um, tests didn't tell like they eventually told me that I was had a high fertility chance but it just it shouldn't have told me that because there was barely any luteinizing hormone showing up on the test strip. So it was really strange, really confusing. So I had one test that was telling me I had probably already ovulated. I'd had the fertility specialist point out the mature follicle and said, you've either just ovulated or are just about to. And then I had these tests go on for days after that, telling me that I was in high fertility and it was just, and, and never reached peak. Like it was just really confusing. So I kind of just guesstimated when I thought maybe I had ovulated and um, just, yeah, thought I didn't really feel any ovulation pain that month. So just kind of assumed maybe nothing had happened and the tests all got confused and who knows. Um, so I just, yeah, I just thought nothing of it at that point. Um, so then um, my period is actually due tomorrow, the 1st of December. Um, so usually what happens to me is a week before my period is due, um, I, the PMS kicks in mega. And for me, that is usually, um, the most obvious symptom is my mood. I often get very depressed. I get very sad. Um, and my motivation to do anything pretty much just plummets. <laughs> um, so, and I, and I can get a little bit short fused and a little bit I want to, I don't want to say bitchy but probably bitchy um in that I things can irritate me and annoy me really easily and I just have to be really mindful not to outwardly project how I'm feeling onto other people so you know I, I hate it when I realize that you know I was a little bit short with Matt or something um because it's not his fault that I go through this every month. Um, anyway, so I noticed over the weekend that that wasn't really kicking in, that I wasn't really feeling moody like I would normally feel. And um, I counted when did I think maybe I ovulated and my ovulation, um, not my ovulation, my fertility app was telling me that I could um, test um, do a pregnancy test. So I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe I'll do a pregnancy test. So on Monday night, um, I was talking to Matt and I said, I'm thinking about doing a pregnancy test the next morning. Um, that, you know, it would be like, you know, four days before my period was due and those, um, first response, um, early response tests can do like five days beforehand. So I was like, so, you know, you know, technically I'm within the window of testing. Um, yeah, I just kind of threw it out there just to see what he thought, because obviously we've, we'd had, you know, several months of uh, uh, several months of um, negative pregnancy tests. So we thought, well, let's just see what happens. Anyway, really long story short. <laughs> um, so I tested on Tuesday morning um, and within like seconds of um, having weed on the stick, um, yeah, two lines appeared and I was just stunned um, to the point where I then 
ran out the backyard in a, my singlet and undies where Matt was gardening and I was, you know, screaming his name and he thought something really horrible had happened because of the way I was dressed and the way I was behaving. He thought maybe there was like a big spider or something. Um, and I was just like, I'm pregnant. And um, I had to tell him a few times because I think it was a bit of a shock for him to go from thinking that there was a spider that he was going to have to deal with to, wait a minute, did she just say she's pregnant? Um, so that was, that was kind of funny. Um, and so then yesterday I, when I got up, I thought oh, I might do another one, another pregnancy test, just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. Um, and the line was darker than the previous day. Um, and so then today, um, I made an appointment to see my GP so I could get a blood test to confirm that I'm definitely pregnant. Um, so yeah, I had my blood test today and I'm going to go back on Monday to get the results. Um, and she's also going to do, uh, my first, um, antenatal, um, appointment, which I have no idea what to expect. So I'll tell you all about that, um, after that takes place. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. I'm extremely early days of being pregnant. My app tells me that I'm three weeks and six days because it counts from the day of your, your the first day of your last period. Um, so yeah, so I'm three weeks and six days. So I'm not even, and I'm not even due for my period yet. That's not until tomorrow. Um, this morning I woke up, I had a little bit of spotting, which everything I've read says is pretty normal for this time um, in the pregnancy. It could be implantation and I'll just keep an eye on it. Um, and of course I, I'm like, why the frickin' hell am I telling people that I am pregnant this early in the pregnancy? Um, but yeah, I just, I thought if it helps somebody else to know the very, very early stuff, um, of what I'm feeling and experiencing, then maybe that'll be helpful. Um, but, but the reality is like, I've only known for two days. Um, and the only things that have happened to me to make me think, huh, I'm pregnant is I didn't get the serious, severe mood swing PMS situation. Um, I've had some problem problems with low blood pressure, um, to the point where I had my shower too hot, um, the other night. And I think I, um, I just overdid it and had to end the shower very, very quickly and go lie down because I was very close to passing out. And yeah, if I stand up too quickly, um, I feel really quite lightheaded. So I think it's a blood pressure thing. So I've got the GP to check my blood pressure today. And she said, while it's not in the low, um, well, she, well, it's not called considered low. Um, it is within the normal range, but it's very low within the normal range. And therefore there's not much wiggle room. Um, so that if my blood pressure does drop, it drops into the low range. Um, so her advice was basically just make sure I'm stay hydrated and don't have really hot showers, which is devastating because I just love my hot showers. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna have to adjust and do that differently. Um, and then the only other thing was today, I maybe, maybe started feeling a little bit tender in my breasts, but nothing, nothing major. So yeah, there's no a thousand symptoms that say, holy shit, I'm pregnant. Um, it's just some very, very subtle, um, changes that mostly is all about the lack of PMS and has nothing to do with nausea or any, anything else. Um, so yeah, because this video has already gone for so much longer than I was anticipating, but that is typical of me. So if you like to make a cuppa and sit down and listen to me crap on for half an hour, then maybe you will be interested in, um, joining me on this journey. Um, I will try my best to keep the video length down a little bit, but, um, this is it for now. Um, I am an open book, so feel free to ask 
any questions. Um, and I'm also really open to opinions, advice, ideas, theories, um, sharing other things that you know. Um, so please feel free to correct me if I say something um, that's inaccurate or if you think you have some good advice for me when I, if I describe something um, that you think might help me. Um, yeah, I'm really, really open to having a, yeah, an interaction with you. Um, so yeah, so that's, um, that's it for now. Um, I'll next make a video, I think after my appointment on Monday. Um, but it may, I may not make the video for a few days after that because I'm actually doing some travel for work. Um, and then, yeah, we'll just go from there. Let's just do weekly updates and fingers crossed we're together for the next eight months. <laughs> um, and we make it through this and my family grows bigger. Hope you're having a fantastic week and taking care of yourself. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.